Okay, maybe we can get started. I see participants still joining, but uh, it's already five minutes after 11, so we'll get started. Uh, good afternoon, dear participants and colleagues. Uh, welcome to today's information session for the CELDE Small Grants Program. Uh, my name is Yasmina Ristovska, and I'm representing the Macedonia Center for International Cooperation and the CELDE team. It's an honor to have you all here. Your presence today signifies a shared commitment to combating corruption and strengthening civil society organizations' role in driving this process. The CELDE Small Grants Program is an initiative designed to empower civil society organizations from the six target countries in their fight against corruption. This program is more than just a funding opportunity. It's a rather call to action for CSOs, including grassroots and youth-led organizations, to amplify their voices and enhance their influence in the ongoing battle against corruption. Our goal with this uh, grants program is twofold. Firstly, to provide the financial support to CSOs dedicated to anti-corruption efforts. And secondly, to integrate these organizations into the CELDI policy advocacy and impact cycle. We believe that by doing so, we can foster a more inclusive and effective approach to policy reforms and anti-corruption initiatives. In today's sessions, we will provide you with comprehensive information about the CELDI Small Grants Program, including details on the application process, eligibility criteria, and the types of projects we are looking to support. We are particularly interested in projects that demonstrate innovative approaches to tackling corruption and that can create a tangible, lasting impact within the communities. We understand that navigating the application process can be sometimes discouraging, especially for small organizations. That is why today is not just about imparting information about the call, but also, also fostering a space where you can ask questions and connect with fellow participants who share your mission and values. Our team is here to support you throughout this journey of crafting compelling proposals that align with the goals of the call. Do I invite you to ask questions, whether by raising your hand during the presentation or using the chat box, or use the opportunity of asking questions later on in line with the instructions provided in the guidelines for applicants. We are grateful for the participation and interest of CSOs, particularly those working at the grassroots level, those led by young people. Uh, your on-the-ground experience and fresh perspectives are invaluable assets in the fight against corruption, and we are excited to see how your projects will contribute to this critical endeavor. As we move forward with today's session, I encourage you to take full advantage of this funding opportunity. We will record the information session in order to ensure tracking of questions, as well as to enable the possibility of publishing the video from this uh, info session. So once again, welcome to solve the uh, Small Grants Program info session. Let's get started. We have prepared a PowerPoint presentation with um, all necessary information about the Small Grants Program. I hope you can all see the presentation. Uh, so the CELDE Small Grants Program uh, is called Financial Support to, uh, for Grassroots and Youth CSOs in, uh, with Outreach to Citizens. Uh, the deadline for submission of concept notes is 1st of August, 4 p.m. Central European time. This call is part or a sub-granting component of a regional project, Civil Society for Good Governance and Anti-Corruption in Southeast Europe, Capacity Building for Evidence-Based Advocacy, Policy Impact and Citizens Engagement. It's a rather long name, so we are calling it just the CELDI project. The project is funded by the European Union and its implementation period of 48 months started as of January 1st of January 2023. The project seeks to strengthen participatory democracy in the EU approximation process through consolidating and enhancing the impact of civil society engagement in the policy making and reform processes in the Western Balkan region in the area of anti-corruption, good governance and rule of law. The impact of the project is based on three interlinked pillars, and that is capacity building for professionalization of CSOs, data-based advocacy for accountability, and citizens' engagement and outreach. For those who might not know, uh, CEL, the abbreviation, stands for Southeast Leadership uh, for Development and Integrity. Uh, it's an anti-corruption and good governance coalition established in 1999 and relaunched in November uh, 2012. CELDI members have substantial experience and are leaders in the field of good governance and anti-corruption in their countries. 
uh, solely pools resources of its members. Under the project consortium, we have one coordinator organization and six co-applicants or partner organizations, including partners from all six Western Balkan countries. And we have our knowledge center and methodological coordinator in Bulgaria, that is the Center for Study of Democracy. We have also 13 associates, including eight CSOs and five anti-corruption agencies from the region. MCIC is coordinator of the project and acts as technical secretariat of the SALDI network, as well as it will act as contracting authority for this call for proposals. SALDI, uh, MCIC in cooperation with the SALDI partners will develop and implement a capacity building and mentorship program tailored for SALDI grantees. It will include mentoring and set of trainings. The grantees will be continuously guided through the process of project implementation, supporting them to successfully carry out the activities foreseen with the project proposals and comply with the necessary contract requirements, especially in terms of financial management and reporting. In addition, SELDI will ensure networking of CSOs, enabling them to connect, support each other, create synergies and possible joint actions. SELDI will involve SELDI grantees into a set of general and thematic trainings. Uh, based on training needs analysis, we will develop a set of uh, thematic treatments. Development of this training program will be entrusted to experienced uh, experts and trainers, and possibility for participation in the thematic part of the trainings will be offered to non-selected applicants as well. The mentoring and the training will be held in English language. The SELDE Small Grants Program seeks to strengthen the contribution of civil society organizations from the six target countries to anti-corruption efforts and their inclusion in the SELDE Policy Advocacy and Impact Cycle by financially prioritizing CSOs, including grassroots and youth active against corruption. The overall objective of the, of the call is to provide support to local CSOs in pursuing the EU and regional anti-corruption agenda in their countries. And in line with issues identified with the SELDI regional anti-corruption report, SELDI policy documents, and the latest country reports uh, for the six target countries. All these documents can be, uh, links to these documents are available in the guidelines for applicants, and all uh, SELDI reports and policy documents are also available on the SELDI website. The specific objective of the call is uh, engaging CSOs and citizens in the SELDI action, and providing synergies across the region by enhancing professional competencies and capacities and skills of CSOs to fight corruption and hold institutions and leaders accountable through evidence-based advocacy and engagement to measure and expose corruption and state capture and to formulate policy outputs. By the capacity building, mentoring, and monitoring uh, of the project, SELDI will seek to improve the skills and abilities of CSOs enabling them to actively participate in the fight against corruption and promoting good governance. We will also strive to enhance cooperation and integration of CSOs into national, national and regional networks and initiatives. For this call, target countries are Albania, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Kosovo, Montenegro, North Macedonia and Serbia. An initial planned duration of a project may fall between 9 to 12 months. The location for the small grants program under the regional project is 292,500 euro. We expect to award approximately 30 to 35 grants under this call. And any grant requested under this call for proposals might be of a minimum grant amount of 7,000 euro and the maximum 10,000 euro. While the minimum salary contribution should be at least 70, uh, 70 of eligible direct costs and the maximum salary amount 90%. So awarded grantees are expected to provide a co-financing of minimum 10% to the total eligible cost of the project that may come from sources other than the European Union funds. The guidelines for applicants defines eligibility of applicants, eligibility of projects, and eligibility of costs. In order to be eligible for a grant under the call, the lead applicant and the co-applicant must be a non-profit making civil society organization registered in line with different legal requirements in the six target countries, have legal personality and be active in the area of rule of law, anti-corruption, transparency, and good governance, be established and active in one of the six countries and be directly responsible together with the co-applicant, if any, for the preparation and management of the project and not acting as intermediary. I mentioned co-applicant, if any, so this means that the lead applicant may act alone or with maximum one co-applicant. 
the LIAD applicant and the co-applicant will implement activities in the country of their establishment and activity. The co-applicant may participate in designing and implementing the action and costs they incur are eligible in the same way as those incurred by the lead applicant. A project is composed of set of activities. The project to be financed under co may fall uh, under the uh, priority areas defined in the guidelines for applicants that include uh, corruption and state capture levels, anti-corruption policies and regulatory environment, institutional practices and enforcement of law, the judiciary in the anti-corruption, hidden economy, civil society in anti-corruption, media freedom, media capture, and international regional cooperation and outreach in the anti-corruption efforts. In the guidelines, we have also defined the uh, types of projects that will be considered as ineligible. There are projects concerned only or mainly with individual sponsorships, individual scholarships, projects for organization of one of conferences and events, projects linked, linked to political parties or of uh, political parties and or religious nature, projects that involve activities that are under the competences of state institutions and authorities, including local government, projects related to tobacco industry, production of alcohol distillate beverages, arms and munitions, and projects that involve purchase of equipment and capital investments. In the guidelines for applicants, we have defined an extensive but still not exhaustive list of activities that may be financed under the call. The list may give you an idea for compelling a solid project proposals. The South Small Grants Program will support activities that will contribute to the achievement of the objectives of the call and of the overall CLD project. There is activity aimed, activities aimed at addressing needs and challenges related to corruption. The organization should not focus only on one type of activity. The project may include a coherent set of activities with clearly defined objectives and planned outcomes. And adequate activities that are not mentioned on this slide, but clearly related to the objectives of the call will be taken into account. The awarded grantees will get involved in other activities that are part of the Saudi project as a whole. Grantees are also expected to take part in, in a three days kickoff and networking event in Skopje that, that will take place uh, upon contract signature. Costs for one participant will be covered by the contracting authority. To take part in the monitoring and capacity building program. Uh, to take part in regular bilateral and joint networking meetings with the Saudi partners and awarded grantees to take part in joint events for the promotion of the outcomes from the implemented grants, to provide input in drafting joint policy documents and reports, to take part in networking events, conferences, and workshops, and to join the Saudi Anti-Corruption Lab established uh, in, tentatively to be established in the second half of uh, 2024. Other important uh, information for the call include that pro project activities may take place in one or more of the con target countries. Applicants may not propose financial support to third parties or sub-granting. They also need to comply with EU visibility requirements, that is, to take all necessary steps to publicize the fact that the European Union and Saudi have financed or co-financed the project. They should also contribute to the communication and outreach activities of the Saudi network through enhanced use of social media. The lead applicant may not submit more than one application under this call for proposal. The lead applicant may not be awarded more than one grant under this call for proposals and may not be a co-applicant in another application under the call. The co-applicant may not be co-applicant in another application and may not be awarded more than, more than one grant under this call for proposals. The contracting authority contribution will be based on reimbursement of eligible costs in the form of actual costs incurred by beneficiaries, supported with accounting records, reports, and supporting documents. Eligible costs should meet standard eligibility criteria that are valid for uh, EU-funded projects, and only eligible costs can be covered by the grant. So applicants um, should provide a realistic and cost-effective budget in the second phase with the submission of the full application, while in the concept note, they're expected only to provide information on the indicative amount and percentage of requested contracting authority contribution. As eligible direct costs for the project, so we may accept gross salaries for staff involved in the implementation of the project, cost of travel related to project activities, including local and international travel costs, direct costs incurred for implementation of proposed activities, 
and project office costs that are relevant to the proposed activities. Contingency reserves and contribution in kind are not allowed, while indirect costs are eligible, provided they do not include costs assigned to another budget heading under the direct costs and may not exceed 77% of the estimate total eligible direct costs. Ineligible costs are also uh, set in the guidelines for applicants. This call is a restricted call uh, with two steps application that is submission of concept notes in the first phase and full application in the second phase. Concept notes and full applications will be submitted electronically. So for the purpose of applying on the call, applicants and co-applicants need to create a user profile on the platform grant.mk. Applicants should strictly follow the instructions given in the concept note and the full application forms, including structure and word limit. Applicants must apply in English and handwritten uh, concept notes and full applications will not be accepted. The deadline for submission of concept notes is 1st of August until 4 p.m. Uh, Central European time or Skopje time. Applicants are strongly advised not to wait until the last day to submit their concept notes since heavy internet traffic or fault with the internet connection could lead to difficulties in submission. The contracting authority cannot be held responsible for any delay due to such aforementioned difficulties. Questions may be sent no later than 9th of July to the email address specified in the guidelines, while replies will be given no later than 19th of July, although we will strive to publish our replies earlier than this date. To ensure equal treatment of applicants, the contracting authority cannot give a prior opinion on the eligibility of lead applicants, co applicants, and project or specific activities. All questions and answers, including important notices, will be published on the websites of MCIC and SELDI. Uh, the submission of concept notes includes completing and submission of a uh, concept note form declaration by the applicant, mandate by co-applicant, and applicants can download trans, uh, templates or forms of these required documents on the platform. And as part of the capacity building and mentorship program of the grant, under the grants program, applicants can express interest for coaching for the process of preparation of the full application in the concept note form. And the manner of delivering of this coaching will be decided once information on the interest of, of potential applicants is analyzed by the contracting authority. Pre-selected applicants will be invited to submit full applications. The submission of the full applications includes completing and submission of full application form, project budget, indicative work plan, legal entity form, and financial identification form. Templates of required documents are available on the platform. Direct grant contract provisions are also available for, the, uh, for downloading for your information. And the deadlines for submission of full applications will be indicated in the letter sent to pre-selected applicants. Uh, proposals will, will, will be evaluated by our evaluation committee established by the contracting authority that will involve also members, representatives of, of the six target countries in order to ensure knowledge of the local contract, context in the countries. Proposals will be evaluated against the best impact uh, and value for money criteria. The evaluation committee and the contracting authority will also take into consideration obtaining reasonable distribution of grants in, in the six target countries. And the evaluation will take place in two stages, administrative and eligibility check and quality evaluation. Upon evaluation of concept notes, a list of applications will be drawn up uh, or ranked according to the total score. During the administrative check of concept notes, we will assess if the deadlines have been met, if the applicant and co-applicant fulfill eligibility criteria, if the applicant has provided all supporting documents required with the guidance for applicants, and if the concept note satisfies criteria specified in its form. If any of the requested information is missing or it's incorrect, and the application may be rejected. The concept notes that will pass eligibility administrative check will be evaluated on the basis of relevance in design of the proposed projects. Firstly, only concept notes with a score of at least 30 will be considered for pre-selection. And secondly, the number of concept notes will be reduced according to the ranking and available budget for the grants program. Lead applicants will receive a letter indicating the respective results and pre-selected lead applicants will be invited to submit full applications. 
Upon administrative checks, full applications will be evaluated on their quality based on evaluation criteria that includes selection and award criteria. Full applications with a minimum of 60 points will be considered for selection, and the highest scoring applications will be provisionally selected up to the available budget. Lead applicants will be informed in writing on the decision. Those rejected will get the reasons for the negative decision. And selected applicants will be invited for contract signature. In the guidelines, we have provided the indicative timeline uh, for, the, uh, for the entire process. As I mentioned, the deadline for requesting projects, uh, for requesting clarifications for the call will be 9th of July. Last date for pu publishing uh, replies will be 19th of July. The deadline for submission of concept note is 1st of August uh, by 4 p.m. Central European time. Information on the evaluation of concept notes and invitations to submit full applications will take place in August or September. We cannot predict a more uh, more exact timing uh, due to summer holiday uh, seasons. Deadline for submission of uh, full applications will be somewhere in October, November, and a notification of award might take place in November, or December, while contract signature is expected in December and start of contract uh, implementation in January 2025. On the following slides, I will provide just short information on the process of registration and application on the Grants.mk platform. Uh, new organizations should, uh, should uh, click on register, while those already registered should simply log in on the platform. With the registration, you need to select one of the six countries and provide the name of the organization's email and password. Once you register, you will receive activation link on your email. And with the activation of the, of the user profile, you will uh, reach the grants uh, applicants portal. Will you will need to provide information for the organizations uh, divided in uh, four separate sections or parts. The first part is registration information. These are mainly information coming from the registration certificate issued by the competent authority in your countries. Uh, including organizational unique identifying number, tax identification number, date of establishment, uh, authorized representative, etc. I just want to mention that those questions that have red asterisks are mandatory. With identity, you provide the name of the organization in local language, in English language, abbreviation, legal representatives, main and additional sectors of activity. In contact information, you provide information on addresses, email, uh, 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 physical address, email addresses, contact persons, as well as information on organizational website and social media profiles of the organization. While in the last part, registration certificate, you just need to attach the registration certificate issued by the competent authority in your country. As you see, the four parts in the right bar will be check marked with the green tick sign once you have completed all information under the four sections, and you should save the data on the save button. Afterwards, in the second part, open calls, you will look and search for the, for the relevant call and click on the apply button. Then you need to uh, provide uh, to create the application by providing title of the project proposal. Be sure that all information in the My Organization section are provided and all separate for section are checkmarked with the green tick sign. Otherwise, you will not be able to submit the application. And once you uh, provide the title of the, the project title, you create the application and then go on the next section and on uh, completing the My, uh, your application part. It has two separate sections, co-applicants and documents. In the co-applicant section, you need to search for the co-applicant, if any, uh, by its uh, unique uh, unique identifying number, the, the number that we have provided in the My Organization section in the first part, registration. Once you will find the co-applicant, you need to import information. The co-applicant will be added. So the partner organization will receive email notification that it has been added as co-applicant in the concept node phase. In the uh, section uh, documents, you can download uh, the concept node mandate by the co-applicant and the uh, declaration by the lead applicant, complete all necessary information whenever it's necessary, signature, stamp, etc. And you simply attach the documents. It's a really quick process. Guidelines and other relevant documents for the call are given on the left bar. 
including full application form, draft contract provisions, etc. Once you attach the documents, uh, you uh, can submit the application. Be sure that all information, the correct documents are um, are entered because you cannot make, make changes upon submission of the application. And once you submit the application, the status of the application will be changed into submit uh, submitted, and you will receive uh, info, email notification that the, the application has, it was submitted. For any difficulties or technical questions with respect to the platform, you can contact uh, support at grants.mk.